Ah, hello, boys and girls. I'm Petey the Parrot, coming to you live from Dr. Martin's Pet Shop in downtown London. And I'm here to teach you about vocabulary lesson 12. Now, before we begin, I'd just like to say that when it comes to words, it's not how many you know, but how you use them. Take my favourite word, for example, chinchilla. I don't even know what a chinchilla is, let alone how to use it in a sentence. Right? Lovely chinchilla you have there. Right? Splendid day for a chinchilla, isn't it? You see, it doesn't make any sense. It's just awkward, really. Right, on to the first word. Appall. Appall means to shock or to horrify. Like, it appalls me sometimes when parents let their kids run around in pet shops unsupervised, sticking their hands into bird cages, getting their fingers bit off. Then it appalls the parents to see their kids running around screaming, gushing blood and the like. It appalls the manager, who's afraid of legal repercussions. Rah! Can't blame him, litigious society and all. And worst of all, at the end of it, you end up in a bird cage. Which brings me to the next word, constraint. A constraint is something that restricts or limits. Like this cage limits my freedom. I don't ask for much. A little fly around now and again. Stretch of the old wings. Maybe that's why they call jail the birdhouse. And prisoners are referred to as jailbirds. I'm sure you understand. Perhaps you said something brash and offensive that appalled your parents and they grounded you. That's a constraint, being locked up in your bedroom. At the end of the day, you children want to go home and relax, don't you? Enjoy a few minutes without someone talking at you, telling you what to do and what to say, and making you memorise words. So for you, homework might be a constraint because it keeps you from talking on the Facebook or tweeting with your pals. I don't want to dissuade you from learning. <coughs> dissuade, by the way, means to persuade someone out of doing something. It means to advise against. I will, however, dissuade you from sticking your fingers in my cage. <coughs> I have no self-control when it comes to fingers. It's an issue I'm working on with my therapist. I went two years once without biting a single finger. I had a cosy little spot right at the front of the shop by the window. One day, bloke comes in looking for a cockatoo. Ends up poking his nubby fingers into my cage, says, Hello, cockatoo. First of all, nobody calls me a cockatoo and gets away with it. And second of all, like I already said, I got a thing for fingers. So I faltered. Falter, rah, falter, the next word means to hesitate or to waver. Hesitate, rah, falter, rah, means to pause for a moment. But waver has a different meaning. Waver means to move back and forth between two sides, to fluctuate and oscillate, as it were, between two decisions. Have you ever heard someone say that they were on the fence about something? They don't mean that they're literally on the fence. The saying is an idiom, right? An idiom. That means that something is stuck between making two decisions, and they could go either way. In this situation, I faltered. I wavered, you see. On the one wing, I wanted to bite him really badly. But on the other wing, I worked really hard for this windowside real estate. And there's this really cute minor bird living in the cage next door. Anyway, you guess which decision I made, because now I'm all the way in the back of the shop with the parakeets. Stupid birds they are. I just ask for a bit of clemency, that's all. A little compassion and understanding. You see, I've been feeling a little frail these past few days. Rah! Frail is a little delicate, you know. Easily broken. I'm not exactly a young parrot anymore. I'm like... A fragile flower, which you should know is a simile. Let me ask you a question. I have a hypothetical situation for you. Hypothetical.
hypothetical, right? Hypothetical means theoretical, supposed, uncertain, like when you assume something without proof. Let's say, hypothetically, that you were looking to buy a bird. Hypothetically speaking, right? Hypothetically speaking, would I be the kind of parrot that would interest you? You don't have to answer now, just think it over. I'm intelligent, funny, and not appalling to look at either. Know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Reason I'm asking is, I've been living in this cage now for over two years, and it makes me bristle when I see some stupid parakeet leaving the store. I just get irate, right? Irate, which means extremely angry or enraged. The word is an adjective, so it's used to describe something, unlike bristle, which is a verb. It's similar to the word irritate, right? which means to make angry. The root, ira, I-R-A, means anger. I knew a bird named Ira once. It's ironic because he was the most calm and placid bird that you've ever met. Calm as a sleeping baby. Never got angry, even with little children poking their fingers at him. Irony, by the way, is when something turns out the opposite of what you would expect. Another word for calm is placid. Right? Placid means peaceful or sedate. I saw a movie once called Lake Placid, which was also ironic because that lake was home to a very large and irate alligator who ate a lot of people. So it's ironic, you see, that the lake was called Placid, because it was not a very peaceful lake at all. Anyway, right, the next word is peninsula. Peninsula refers to a body of land surrounded by water on three sides. When you're surrounded on all sides by water, that's an island. Florida is an example of a peninsula because it extends from the mainland into the ocean. My cousin, Philip, migrated to Florida, actually. Says it's quite nice, except for all the hurricanes. I don't think I'd mind, actually. I prefer the subtropical weather to all this gloom here in London. Besides, a little humidity is good for the heart. I, I haven't always lived in a pet shop, you know. I used to belong in a zoo. Had a nice warm aviary to live in. An aviary is a large enclosure for birds. To what can I compare it? Here's an analogy. If a cage is like a prison cell, then an aviary is like being trapped in a five-star hotel with excellent room service. Life was good. I could have a little fly around every now and again, stretch my own wings. I had a good thing going. But then one day, a parakeet showed up. Bird named Noodles. Ah, noodles! I don't like parakeets, as you know. I guess you could say I'm prejudiced when it comes to parakeets, stupid birds. Prejudice? Ah, prejudice means that you make judgments about a person or people before you know them and meet them. It means you make up your mind about something before you even tried it. Do you remember the first time your mum tried to make you eat broccoli? You stared at that funny looking green thing and said you didn't like it. You formed an opinion before you had a knowledge of the facts. People can be prejudiced towards other people too. I see a parakeet, for example, and I get irate. I just can't control myself, and you don't want to be around me when I lose control. Right? First I ruffle my feathers and squawk loudly, but that's just a prelude to what's coming next. Right? A prelude, right? a prelude, in case you don't know, is an introductory event, like a part that comes before another part. You know when you went to a concert, and there was some other performer that came on before the one you paid to see? That's a prelude. You see, after the prelude, when I ruffle my feathers, I get crazy. I rate times ten. I start saying things which are rah, profane, rah, profane, you know, swear words and the like. Profane means disrespectful and vulgar. Well, I lived with a family once, and they had a 14-year-old boy who knew some pretty fancy four-letter words, if you know what I mean. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. 
I learned 600 words that year. Don't know how to use a single one in a sentence. So here I am, minding my own business, and they try to introduce this parakeet named Noodles into my habitat. And after the initial pre-show, the prelude, I began turning out these profane words. Perhaps you know them as profanity, or swear words, cuss words, curse words. My mum and dad used to wash my beak out with birdseed if I used profanity at the dinner feeder. Nonetheless, I was in singular form this time because I started to attract a small crowd of spectators. Watchers, you know. Noodles walks up on my branch, gets all up in my face, looks me dead in the eye and says, Right, hello. Can you believe the nerve of this puny little bird? Puny, by the way, means less than normal in size and strength. And it is a common known fact that parakeets are smaller than true parrots. I said, you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Because it looks like you're talking to me. You say hello again, I dare you, double dare you. You say hello again, and I'll break your beak in. And you know what that crazy parakeet says? Ah, hello. Now, let me tell you, and I'm not proud of it. I was ruthless. Which means, ah, ruthless, which means, ah, Ruthless, which means that I had no mercy or compassion. I did not show any clemency at all. I had to avenge myself, you understand. Nobody calls me hello and gets away with it. And being in such a harsh mood, I knocked him off the branch with the back of my wing. You would think because they're small that they wouldn't put up much of a fight. But nope, for such a small little bird, they're quite fierce. After our skirmish, or a short minor battle, a skirmish, a short, small fight, I was sent to this less hospitable facility. Cast out of paradise, so to speak, taken to this pet shop, locked in this constraint, surrounded by parakeets, stupid birds. Ironic, don't you think? It's not all bad. With so many people coming in and out of the shop, a parrot can learn a lot of good words. Second, they bring me a new newspaper every day and spread it out on the bottom of my cage so I can read it. Learn most of my words that way, I do. And when I'm done, I just poop on the articles I don't like and they bring me a new page. Well, it's almost feeding time and you need to start studying these words. Make sure to use them in a sentence. I think it's a fun idea to try to use them when you're talking to your pals or your family. See how many times you can work them into a conversation without having anyone notice. This is Pity the Parrot saying, see you later, ciao, sayonara, afita saying, shalom, adios, and goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting words next time. Ah,